Welcome to Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon, the franchise that pioneered the tactical genre. In 2001, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon defines the squad-based military shooter genre with realistic and challenging gameplay. As a powerful sequel, Ghost Recon 2 introduces a dynamic shift to third person and supports up to 16 players in enhanced multiplayer modes. Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter improves the focus on team coordination and features actual military prototype equipment and weapons. One year later, Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter 2 delivers a deeply immersive campaign and multiplayer future war experience with the ability to command supporting units. In 2012, Ghost Recon Future Soldier makes a shift to exhilarating cover-based gameplay with the inclusion of the sync shot, gunsmith, and adaptive camouflage technology. In 2017, Ghost Recon Wildlands leads a tactical shooter into a breathtaking open world experience to explore either solo or up to four player co-op, as well as in a tactical 4v4 PvP mode in Ghost War. future of Ghost Recon. Hey everyone, my name is Emil Dalbon. I'm a U.S. Army Green Beret. I've served with Special Forces for 14 years and have deployed all over the world. I'm also very proud to be a writer on a new Ghost Recon game. Being part of the Ubisoft team has been an incredible journey for me, and we are so excited to share with you, our community, an experience that is going to bring players closer to real special operations missions than ever before. When we launched Ghost Recon Wildlands, we released an action-packed open-world military shooter that can be played in solo and up to four-player co-op from beginning to end. We were completely blown away by your response. We are so grateful to our community that has grown to more than 15 million players. It's an honor. The stakes are high. Today, we're super excited to introduce a brand new Ghost Recon game to you. So let's get to it. Our story begins on a remote island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean called Aroa. The mythical golem was imagined as an artificial intelligence designed to serve and protect the myth is now a reality. This self-driving vehicle crossed the entire United States without a human touching the wheel. The computer was creative. It outsmarted me every step of the way. Entrepreneur, visionary, genius. Jay Skell is planning to change the world. This is our first deployment of lethal drones. They have already saved countless U.S. lives. From our new headquarters on Oro Archipelago, Skell Technology will, quite simply, build the future. Skell Tech drones will enhance industries across the globe. They will eliminate food shortages, heal the sick, and in time, erase poverty. Mr. Skell, critics claim that with new autonomous systems, we risk summoning the devil. What do you say to that? We combine AI and machinery to serve humanity peacefully. I am personally dedicated to keeping that. Scary. Machines that can act together and react faster than humans. They're cheaper and more efficient than any other measure. There's no doubt that swarm surveillance systems will reduce crime on our streets. Would Mr. Skell care to comment on the recent assassination of a political candidate by a lethal drone? Mr. Skell has no comment at this time.
Lethal, autonomous weapons are being developed and deployed without oversight or limitations. They are the next global threat. The UN must vote to enact sanctions on the spread of these weapons. We must act now. We've lost contact with Aroa. No way to reach Jake Skell. Yes, sir, I understand the risk level. We're sending them in. The ghosts are elite spec up soldiers. The best of the best. But just how far can you push the ghosts? How strong are they? How much can they take before they break? A break point is a forced posture change. A shift from attack to defend. From defend to withdraw. From recon to survive. It is the moment when a unit has lost its combat effectiveness. When it is no longer able to fight. The onset of this inability to carry out a mission constitutes a break point. This is Ghost Recon Breakpoint. In the past, the Ghost had a plan. What if this time there was no briefing? What if this time the enemy expected them? Let's start at the beginning of Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Your call sign is Nomad. The ghost sent to Aurora. You have been sent there for what seems to be a usual mission. But this is far from what is about to happen. From this point on, all of your military survival skills will be put to the test. As you make your way through this mysterious island, you will discover the majesty, the beauty and diversity of this brand new open world. From snowy peaks to sandy beaches, jungles, deserts, fjords, even a volcano. But you're not on a row to sightsee. Nestled in a beautiful archipelago and driven by the singular vision of accomplished engineer Jace Skell, they develop AI and autonomous drones. Skell's mission is to make the world a better place. But the road to hell is paved with good intentions. In the wrong hands, Aurora could turn into the most dangerous place on Earth. And it does. On Aurora, you are no longer the hunter. You are the hunted. And even worse, the Hunters are a unit of elite pickup soldiers gone rogue. They have the same training as you, the same experience. And they call themselves the Wolves. And they have taken over the island. The Wolves are the most formidable opponents the Ghosts have ever had to face. Not only have they taken over Aroa, they've also reprogrammed Skell's drones to become powerful killing machines. You're lost behind enemy lines. And your enemy is powerful and merciless. So, ghosts, can you survive your breakpoint? Ghost 1-1, one, one, this is Ghost Lee. I'm two bikes at your location, but a guy, some bands on my ass. Rally on me to eliminate the threat. Copy, Ghost Lee. I'm on route to your RP. Time now. 
Nothing to report. I'm gonna continue my search. Reconning for location. You have hostile to my right. Copy. On target. Ghostly, we're set. I'll bring you the fight to you. Be ready. Good cover. Bravo team will set a diversion at the gate. Me and 1-1 one -one will fill the camp through the rear. Copy.
three hostiles. That's an Alpha Strong. Stand by. Go fleet to initiate. Did he spot it? happens around here.
everything you saw in this walkthrough was made possible thanks to one thing, experience. Seven years ago, we started Wildlands with a team of 30. We now have more than a thousand developers focused on Ghost Recon. In the past two years alone, we've released 19 title updates. Breakpoint is bigger and better than anything we've done before. This new game puts you in the boots of an elite special operations soldier. And on a roller, you'll need every bit of your training and experience to survive. The terrain has a real impact on your gameplay. It can be your enemy or your ally. You'll have to cross bodies of water and climb. Slopes will make you slide and tumble. But you'll have the agility and new skills. With the prone camo feature, you can truly blend into your environment, using your surroundings to escape or surprise your enemies. And to make the experience more immersive and intense, players can also suffer serious injuries. And depending on the gravity of the wound, players will need to adapt. Can they still aim their rifle? Can they run and escape? Fortunately, you will also be able to heal yourself, either on the spot or in the brand new bivouac. The bivouac feature will allow players to rest and refit in the wilderness with their squad and do what real special operations soldiers do. You'll have a wide variety of tools at your disposal. You'll be able to cut through fences, unlock a drone that will allow you to slingshot several targets, even in solo, or use a rocket launcher to take down enemies. But survival isn't only about fighting. It's also about stealth. You can pick up and hide the body of an enemy to remain undetected, or move your fellow wounded ghost to safety. Finally, you'll be able to play as multiple classes, and will be able to change class at any time from the bivouac. Four different classes will be available at launch, with more to come. The thinking behind many of these gameplay mechanics came from you, our community. Let's hear about how Ghost Recon Breakpoint has been inspired by your feedback. You have been our secret weapon in taking Ghost Recon to a whole new level. First, Ghost Recon Breakpoint will feature a new main story with hundreds of cutscenes, dialogue choices, and more characters for you to discover. The variety of enemies you'll face will keep things interesting, to say the least. There are many enemy archetypes with different abilities and weapons, and they're dangerous, like this armored behemoth that'll take strength and precision to take down. Enemy behavior has also evolved. If you get spotted, or if they become suspicious, your enemies will now coordinate together to take you on. Enemies will now always be on patrol throughout the world. A constant reminder that in Ghost Recon Breakpoint, you're the prey. And to take them on, you'll now have fan favorites and all new weapons at your disposal. The gunsmith will give you access to a ton of different attachments that'll have a lot more impact on weapon statistics and performance. And you'll have even more options for character customization. And yes, this does include bloused boots. You'll be able to explore Aroa on road and off, by air and by sea. And there'll be more military vehicles to traverse this new world. Want to go fast? Take a Falcon. Want to plow through the jungle? Take a Fat Boy. Want to fight the wolves? Try a Locust. Of course, Ghost Recon Breakpoint is fully playable in solo and up to four player co op. And we are happy to announce that PvP will be available at launch for all players. But that's not all. You'll keep the same character throughout your whole experience in Breakpoint. This means you keep the same customization, the same skills, the same weapons, the same progression across the entire game. And this is just the beginning. Every four months after launch, we'll release a new major expansion episode to the game. It'll include the very first raid in a Ghost Recon game. Here's a taste of what's to come.
a lot of people put tons of passion into the making of this game. But we could not have done it without you, our community. And so it is our pleasure to present to you our world premiere. Our announced trailer for Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Never surrendering. And with my brothers and sisters at my side, there is no fight we fear. Take the life of my brothers. When you provoke me, it doesn't matter how powerful you are. I will burn your world to the ground. I'm a ghost too. I would expect nothing less. Ghost Recon Breakpoint is here, so strap on your boots, because you have a mission. Stay tuned to hear more, live from our studio. We'll be there to answer your questions. Oh my Holy goodness. Crap. Well, while we take a second <laughs> to catch our breath after that reveal, we are here with GameSpot Live, and we are brought to you by Ubisoft. My name is Persia, and I am here with Jack Patillo. Hello. Hi, Internet. How are you guys doing today? Well, we've been watching that reveal, right, alongside you guys, and I am like yeah, it's, in awe. Yeah, that was... Uh, <laughs> It's, it's one of those things where it's like you see a game where it's like okay like I loved Wildlands and I love kind of how they built up this world and now it's like let's take it to the next step mm -hmm. let's take it to the next level and oh my gosh like everything we saw in there and that reveal right there at the end uh, yeah okay like this, <laughs> okay we, we, we've got a lot of stuff to talk about over the next a bit of time right yes like a ton to go over and a ton to just highlight in general like right from the start they made it very clear like they wanted us to really step 
in the shoes of these soldiers and you know experience what they experience all the time in such a realistic way on top of that which I think they're capturing pretty well so far. Yeah, I think it's going to be tough for me to uh, really find myself in the form of a big white dude with a beard. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be it's going to be a lot of trouble where I'm like, I don't know how would he react? Like, would he clean his beard? Would he get the mud out of it? Would he keep going through? No, it's it, this looks awesome, and obviously, like, I mean. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we're, we're just processing. We literally yeah. just finished watching that, watching all this with you guys. First time I've seen any of this stuff, and I'm very, very excited for it. It looks awesome. We've got so much stuff to talk about. Freaking a, a raid? A raid? Oh, yeah. I, I was just telling it, okay. Jack here, yeah. this is right up your alley because you're just talking about how much you love the raids, and they're bringing it <sighs> to Ghost Recon for the first time ever. First time, yeah. Like, and, and it looked awesome, too. Like, the crazy locations of the volcano. It's funny. They mentioned <laughs> a volcano early on, and I'm like, that the volcano? I want to explore that, and yes. it looks like the raid might be involving volcano stuff but anyway how should we start where should we start from the beginning where what do we want to do where can we even start because there was so much like even right from the beginning they talk about aroa uh -huh. right and if you guys played through operation oracle which now makes a lot more sense to us because mm -hmm. this storyline kind of feels like a direct extension of that we get to see more of walker but if you remember last time we left off he kind of trusted us a little yeah, bit yeah i don't know what happened between yeah, now and then so something <laughs> serious went down aroa beautiful it covers all these different types of terrain and the volcano of <laughs> course so they definitely stress that this terrain is going to play a big impact in our, you know, everyday gameplay, every minute. Yeah, I mean, it's, it seems like anytime some rich, you know, smart dude gets an <laughs> island, Nothing good I comes of that. Nothing, that. nothing good ever comes of that. We got, we got Jay Skell, who's the uh, the guy who's designing these robots. Mm -hmm. It's always like, oh yeah, robots gonna be good, and then you strap a gun to it, and then everything yeah, changes. I don't exactly. know. Well, we gotta, we gotta, so we gotta tell Elon Musk no guns on any <laughs> on any Teslas, because uh, yeah, that's where it all goes downhill. But yeah, exactly. And you know, they kind of nailed it on the head in the preview. Is that okay? Yeah, you mean well. This technology is gonna be great, but in the wrong hands. Not so great. <laughs> so then we get introduced to the wolves, right? Yeah. Which yeah. clearly is Walker's squad. Yeah, they look badass too. Look at that. Look at those yeah. skulls. Like who gets to pick that? Like why don't why don't the good guys wear stuff like that? The good guys are always like, you know, we'll put a little like makeup under our eyes and look pretty cool. But it's like, I want a no, skull I'm scared. mask. I'm, I'm scared of those guys. I want to look like a death eater while I'm walking around <laughs> killing people. Like the, come on, man. That's that we, I'm sure, but it, to be fair, the amount of customization it looks like it's going to happen in this yeah. game, I'm sure we're going to end up getting stuff like that. Like, they, oh, they've all, like the, the, the Ghost game's always been really good about really mm -hmm. making your character what you want to make it, and I'm sure we're going to yeah. be able to see some cool modifier stuff. So. And they definitely stress the fact that they've been listening to the community, and, you know, customization options are one of the many things they are bringing to the game to, you know, make this a better experience for everyone playing at home. Um, yeah, I, I always love I love that about Ubisoft titles. Like I'm I'm a self-professed Ubisoft <laughs> fanboy, 100. percent And I love that they always seem to when when one game figures it out, you see other Ubisoft titles pick up that stuff and then take it into their game. Like even like the Gunsmith here, like in Division Two right now. Like there's a lot of customization you have for weapons. I imagine a lot of that stuff is like, hey, we figured this out over here. Why don't we help you over here? And like even something simple like picking up a body and carrying it off. It's like, yeah. oh my god, like that's an Assassin's <laughs> Creed thing. Like exactly. absolutely. You can pick up a body and hide it, or like, and now you know, pick up a wounded soldier, carry them somewhere else, be able to give them right. heals elsewhere instead of in somewhere the line of fire. <laughs> and I love, I love that Ubisoft's been very open and very like, you know, let's take what we've done in other games mm -hmm. and implement it into our newer ones. And mm -hmm. they've done a really, really fantastic job of that. And I'm excited to see what other elements of other games we're going to see in this. Yes, like we should definitely talk about the buddy system, like carry system <laughs> more. But before you even like get to that, something that really stuck out to me was the wound system. Oh my gosh. Because you know, it's one thing you get you get shot, you get wounded, you just hide for a little bit, everything goes back to normal and then on about your date. Yeah. This time not so much. Like they're gonna make you think twice you about know, going out there, Rambo status, like trying to run and gun because these <laughs> this damage is gonna take its toll over time, and you have to heal yourself. But don't you know, like once you get shot in the leg, you just you know give yourself a good 15 seconds and you're fine. <laughs> right? That's how it works. You just shake it off. You know, rub some mud in there, you're fine. No, it's um. <laughs> 
It's pretty. I, I, I mean, I, as, as dorky as it is, I love seeing this dude wrapping bandages around his arm. Right. You know, like it's something about like, okay, you always see like, just put something on you when you're done. It's like to actually see like, oh, there's a physical bandage on his arm and his exactly. leg now. Like, and in the spot that he was damaged, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, some games you're just wrapping the same thing every time, and yeah. that's just the cue that you're healing yourself. But he went for the arm that was damaged, went for the leg that was damaged, and those details really make it an immersive experience. I'm yeah, like, it's really yeah. looking forward to it. It's 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 one of those things that I know is gonna be annoying as hell yeah. when you're playing the games <laughs> like, oh God, come on, not the arm again. You know, and they even mentioned like later on if you get injured it might affect your aiming. Like you might yeah. not be able to carry a heavy weapon mm -hmm. based on, you know, how hurt you are. And so that to me is pretty nuts. And then hiding and like simple stuff. Like even when he's in the water right here, he's carrying his gun above the water. He right. keeps it lifted up and it's like, oh that's such a simple thing that you don't really think about, but mm -hmm. someone had to program that. Like he never lets his, his weapons hit the actual water. Like that's so cool. And the way he like runs and slowly he starts like right. muscling away through. And then we get our predator moment here in a bit where he gets all covered <laughs> in mud like that on the deer. Of course, that deer is dead. <laughs> that deer is dead as hell, by the way. Um, but yeah, like that, that the active camo was like that was that was amazing. Uh, prone camo. Yeah. And so the dude he just like covers himself in mud. Like that's. I, it's smart. Yeah. It's something you'd probably do in real life. Well, I wouldn't because I hate getting muddy. But I mean, but that's for survival, <laughs> Jack. For survival, you wouldn't. But I mean, like, it's so cool. I mean, it's it's so nice though because these are the moments that are like the most terrifying when you look right. up and you're just surrounded by enemies. But he's like, okay, I'm just gonna lay here and now I'm gonna roll around in the mud and get myself <laughs> dirty, which is exciting. But then I just know I'd be gross from that point on. So I would. You know, it, it gets all in the like, beard. Gross it gets in the beard. Or dead. That's true. That's true. <laughs> and uh, I will say here, I, like we were watching this earlier, so he goes prone, very sneaky, very stealthy, and then of course he looks around and he's got guys surrounding him everywhere. He stealth kills one guy and then goes loud, which yeah. is exactly my <laughs> technique in any game like this. I can I get one or two stealth kills and then all all hell breaks loose yeah, and it's like exactly. all right, run and gun, here we go, Let's start shooting. But uh, but yeah, like yeah, so here he goes, covered in mud. That's not good. You know he's got open wounds too. I know, right? So. I mean, that's a sign of being tough. You rub some dirt in it. And he goes for the prison stab, where he gets the, the multiple <laughs> stabs as well. And then he's just all out. Yeah. And then at this point, so this is where they reveal, like, oh, here we go. This isn't just a solo experience, because now we're bringing, yeah. in, we're bringing in your buddies here. Mm -hmm. And so um, they didn't explicitly say it, but clearly there's some kind of class system here, because yeah. this dude's more of your assault, kind of traditional, basic one. We saw a sniper. We mm -hmm. saw a heavy weapons guy. Um, we saw the I looked, smoke screen. The smoke screen, so maybe it's some kind of support class. And uh, Wild Dance is really good about that, where you could kind of create your character how you want, how you like mm -hmm. to play. Personally, I'm always the support guy. I yeah. like I like sitting back, marking enemies. I like you know helping people out, healing people. Mm -hmm. And it looks like that's 100% going to be available in this as well, which it makes me very excited. I'm sure expanded upon as well. Yeah, I mean, they mentioned that four classes are going to be available at launch with more to come. So that's always something to look forward to. I'm actually very excited. They are keeping, like, with tradition, you know, that same support we're always used to is going to continue to happen. And, you know, in this day and age, that's something very, very important, you know, for any community in their game is to have that constant support. So, yeah, yeah. It's like we get this major reveal, all these trailers, all this hype, and then guess what? There's still more on the way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And one thing, one thing really cool too is the progression. So the progression carries through the entire game, yes. which is important because you know as you play these characters, you're gonna start leveling up, getting mm -hmm. different weapons, and especially all the, the modifications you do with the gunsmith. Having that be able to carry across everything is gonna be great. Yeah. And I'm curious about PvP as well because it's launching with PvP, yeah. which is neat. Because I remember Wildlands took some time for the PvP mm -hmm. hit, and that was a really really neat style of PvP. So so I'm curious, I, I want to learn more about that because I like where you can kind of pick the classes and sort of play like that. And I'm curious if it's more going to be the character you make in single player will be the same character you bring in a PvP Maybe. and if that progression carries over. Yeah, so. that would be pretty intense too. But hey, they did say shared progression. That would make sense. I think so. so, yeah. So, I mean, you could really kind of like iron out the kind of character you want to play. But to be fair, playing PvE versus PvP is a radically different experience. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> it's going to be interesting. But also, it looks like the, uh, was it the BioVac? Is that what it was called? The, oh, yeah. Uh, Bivouac? Bivouac. Bivouac. Yeah. So, the yeah. Bivouac. So, you can customize your character. So, mm -hmm. if there is a class you want to play that, you know, you could swap like classes like mm -hmm. that. Like, that's pretty cool. And you yeah. can modify and customize your character constantly so and you know that's really similar to like what real soldiers use out in the field and stuff like that so I definitely get this realism vibe like that's something they're definitely going for and I think it's worth
working really well from what <laughs> I've seen because it makes me interested. It's making me think a little bit harder about my course of action and what I'm going to do next and, you know, actually forcing me to prepare instead of just, oh, here's my objective and I'm going to go ham. So yeah, yeah. I like that. I like that it's involving a little bit of prep time because there are cool new additions like the breach system, something yeah. that I was like, man, I wish I could just open this gate right now oh and like now I can so yeah I, I literally I wrote that down it was like finally we can breach a fence because <laughs> yes. nothing was more frustrating than it's like okay I need to get right on the other side of this wall here yep. I'm I'm 10 feet away but I'm gonna go all <laughs> the way around or somehow get up and it's just like exactly. oh we don't have just a, a, a wire cutter you right. know and it's like <laughs> and here we go we finally we can actually breach a fence as simple it's as it beautiful. seems it's like oh that's that's awesome and I love too that it like you can see it like retract because the heat is like whoa. Yeah. There we go. It's awesome, and mm. I like that it's not just a bolt cutter. It's like a torch. Oh yeah. You know we're technologically advanced. And this is a <laughs> this is a really lovely location too. Like if if there wasn't a horrible war and people right. dying, I would love to visit this place. And I do like this sort of juxtaposition of like you know the the jungle and all the chaos and then this, these really nice modern looking IKEA right. houses, you know. Because um, it is a tech island after all. Like this is the Skelltech HQ, so <laughs> you know they got all the tech in there. And of course the drones are back, which I loved. I loved yep. the drones so much in Wildlands, and um, that's actually going to be what helps you with the sync shot and everything like that when you're playing alone because I think you're only really gonna have those teammates when you're playing the co-op mode, and then the drones are kind of like your support system when you're solo. Yeah, they, they mentioned that specifically, that the drones can do the sync shots, mm -hmm. which is one of my favorite things to do, is like something about yeah. marking four people, <laughs> and it's like, all right, count down, three, two, one, fire, and then it's like watching all these bodies at the floor is so great, yeah. and it's so great. And the idea you can do that by yourself now is like pretty cool, so you don't have to play with other people mm -hmm. or someone okay. who just keeps ruining it for It'll you. It'll probably make it easier to acquire those sync shots too, because that was always something too. Sometimes I would be so far ahead of my teammates and I would have to wait for them to catch up to acquire the shot and stuff like that so I think it's gonna be really interesting definitely gonna help um, kind of tailor the uh, the missions that you're using to fit your style better than you and your like AI teammates around you yeah so. yeah that and, is awesome. Yeah, and also, so they added some new technology, including, including sliding down a mountain technology, <laughs> which we, we finally get in so many games. It's pretty much just like, just run straight down a mountain. It's like, nope, nope, you're sliding. Yeah, yeah there, you're going to lose footing and go. So I love that towards the end, he was like rolling, and I was like, yeah, that sounds exactly <laughs> how it would happen with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, of course, you got your, your tactical baseball hat as well. Like, I love I love the hats and, like, the bucket hat the dude's wearing there. And, like, I yeah, that's, that's camouflage. always nice. Oh, yeah, I loved this. Oh, the yeah. prone takedown. Yeah, prone takedown, which is super, super dorky, but I love it. It's and, like, great. Like, the leg grab and then snap. They're so aggressive with the knives in this game, yeah. too. My God, they're vicious. You, know, you want, like, a happy stealth kill, you know? It's <laughs> like, they don't even know they're going to die, but it's like, no, no. They're, they're very much yeah, like, yeah, we're going to... they gonna, know what's coming. We're going to ruin There's you. There's nothing they can do about it. Man, something about flying death machines is just terrifying. <laughs> like, like AI death machines in any capacity, they're just, just really, really scary. <laughs> then, but, yeah, I do love that, you know, we, we went inside this building eventually, and you saw the civilians as well, which is yeah. kind of like, oh... There's just, there's civvies out there that's like, oh, we're not going to actually hunt those people. And, like, right. I'm curious as to what, like, what were to happen if one of them does, like, take collateral damage? Mm. Like, does this all hell break loose? Or is it, like, you want to not, you know, take out people who are innocent, even though they probably made all the death robots? Mm -hmm. So, that's, there's so many you questions know, well, like, Wildlands, it was like, don't kill too many civilians or too many of your own people, because it is going to affect you at some point in the mm -hmm. game. So, I would assume it's definitely going to be up that alley. And also, you know... We're not after the civilians here. <laughs> we are here to make this island a better place and to hopefully not get hunted by these wolves. Ugh. And like on top of all of that, the wolves and the combat and everything, I noticed like some more intense combat system in the preview of the mission. Oh yeah. Where it was like he was running up to him and like going for, you know, melee like what we're used to, but it actually looked a little bit more like a combat system yeah, or yeah. something of the sort. More animations. Definitely cool. I yeah, enjoyed it. it. There was definitely like like I think she ran up to the guy and then it was a back and forth. It wasn't yeah. just like I'm gonna hit a button, go through a cutscene right. and we're done. It's like, oh, there may actually be some sort of like fight there. Exactly. We, we don't know. We'll have to find out we more in the future. Find out on and October fourth. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's crazy though. I mean there've been two decades now of Ghost Recon and just to think of where it's gone from like advanced warfighter all the way up to, to wildlands mm -hmm. and to breakpoint now it's it's nuts like how how much has changed and how 
it's just this is a fun game. It's a really really cool game. The way the way they sort of adapted and changed it over the years has been really neat. I've yeah, loved the franchise. Yeah, I was going to ask you actually because we were talking earlier and you mentioned that you played like every Ubisoft game <laughs> ever, and I was like, that's cool. So you probably have the best opinion of most people. Like, how do you? feel about their evolution of their games with the announcement of Breakpoint? I think it's been fantastic. Like, they've they've definitely kind of taken on um, like the, the whole idea of, of adding more people and making it more of a social thing. Like, from Division 2, where, like, now, I mean, you know, we it, they've really opened it up. It's like, Division 2 is the best when you're playing with other people. Same thing with Wildlands. Like, when you're playing Wildlands with three friends, yeah. like, that's a blast. And it's like driving around together, goofing around. Even, like, the Far Cry titles, like, playing co-op in Far Cry. It, like, something about... Uh, just playing with a buddy is so much fun, and they've been very good about showing that off in their different titles. Like every time you see a promo, or every time you see a new new game for mm -hmm. something or a new release for something, they always show the multiplayer stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's one of their big focuses, and I think that's they they've done a really really good job of that. And the idea of raids coming to Ghost yeah. Recon now, like I know the raid in in Division Two is going to be eight players. I'm curious what it's going to be in this one. So yeah. I wonder if they're going to expand it past you know from four out to eight or or maybe even further than that who knows and how does that work what is the story behind it like where do all these people all these ghosts come together to fight like the raid boss or whatever right. it's gonna be which looks like a flying tank maybe <laughs> and in a volcano is yeah it looks ridiculous but it's like the progression like ubisoft's been really really good about about taking these worlds and expanding upon them and not not just kind of wiping them out and starting them over fresh like right. this is this is a universe that exists within the ghost recon world mm -hmm. and it makes sense it's like oh yeah obviously this is where it would go like this could all tie together somehow and so right. Um, I'm still waiting for the ultimate, you know, Ubisoft cinematic universe, you know, <laughs> where it turns out all of these He's games so are all together. But then we get stuff like this. It's like, hmm, you think maybe, like, the Skeletech would have shown up in Watch Dogs, or maybe it is in Watch Dogs under a different name. Mm. I, I, yeah, anyway. Yeah, I, I, have a lot of, I have a lot of conspiracy theories about how <laughs> maybe, maybe Skeletech is part of Abstergo, who also works with Far... Anyway. And then, hey, anything's possible, and if there's anything that we've learned, at least today, <laughs> is that... They're listening and oh, yeah. they care about what the community thinks. So, um, like that definitely shows in the combat system. And like you mentioned, the raids before, like it might be four, it might be eight. Well, you know, you guys can always let them know what you yeah. think too. So I, I love the more the merrier, man. So something about, yeah. but the raids in particular for pretty much any title, like something about working together cooperatively to achieve a, a common goal is so much fun. Like that, that's some of my favorite content ever is doing raid raid fights in various games. And so um, I'm really pumped for uh, the raid to come out in. Uh, in in Division 2 whenever that hits that's I know it's coming out soon um, but yeah and like the idea of raids in this is like okay okay I want I want to <laughs> do this now too and so and it's just yeah the, the, the idea of being able to develop a character make your character exactly what you want to do taking those skills and bring it into mm -hmm. a game is, is so much fun and then and then my big thing is again as a support class I like helping other people do better yeah. so it's like hey maybe you can like play an assault character or like a heavy character and I'm just gonna keep you alive yeah. so you just go tank and I'm just gonna keep you healed mm -hmm. up and alive and, and the so, fact that it looks like they do have more tailored classes and yeah. things like that Definitely seems like they're promoting people to assign themselves these roles within your squad to provide the best possible course of action because they want you to prepare for these missions. You're also fighting against former ghosts too, or at least walkers. My, former yeah, ghosts. freaking walker. Yeah, that's <laughs> that was kind of. I mean, yeah, that, we're okay. We're, we got we have a pretty sweet antagonist that looks right. like. Yeah, I mean. Uh, he's not he's not a happy looking dude. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, even in the Operation Oracle teaser, you know, he says all of two lines, but those two lines actually told me a lot, right? He's like, you know, at some point even a ghost needs help, right? And then you look forward to this, it's like, yeah, you're right. These guys is like they need some help right now. They are being hunted and so on and so forth. But then he's also, you know, ends it with saying but lucky for you, or good for you, I'm a ghost too. And I'm yeah. like, oh, I don't know if that is a good thing. And now <laughs> yeah. looking at it, it's definitely not. Yeah. Because now they have to fight against him and take him down with him having access to this technology like how do you think that's even going to set the tone for the difficulty of this game no kidding man yeah i mean like the idea that a ghost with all this sort of evil tech and all these drones and stuff like that's nuts <laughs> to me but that's, that just goes on to show you again like how cool it is that ubisoft like has this sort of world where it's like in wildlands we're gonna tease the next game like it literally yeah. will lead into the next game via dlc like that's that's awesome or an expansion it's like that's so cool that it they're is. able to like drop this one little story and it's like oh here's a little mission that's totally setting up the next game. Yeah. Like that is that is really really neat. Even they even have like like so like smart. like Sam Fisher showed up too at one point yeah. in Wildlands and it's like 
cool all right like all these worlds are all connected and like there's just one constant flow of, of narrative and I love that they're able to do that and able to pull this stuff off. And uh, yeah, and seeing seeing uh, Barenthal looking down at me is <laughs> that's pretty frightening, man. And no, yeah. you don't want to get on his bad side, I don't think. Yeah, and exactly. So, man. And you know, he said it even in the end of the trailer. It's like there's nothing I won't do if someone you know crosses me or my brothers and sisters. And obviously, from the end of Oracle, we know that Walker is walking that line. No pun intended. Yeah. Of you know feeling burned by losing his squad and, you know, his gut brothers and sisters. And now, look, he's like, no more. I'm not going to let it happen. Like, he's like, I'm taking over now. Yeah, he's got some scars, man. He's been he's seen some <laughs> seen some rough times there. That's pretty intense. And I got to say, too, shout out to the the devs. I love I, I love oh, watching yeah. devs, and they were all being very badass, just kind of sitting like, yeah, I all right, yeah, it. we're talking <laughs> Ghost Recon. I, I love that kind of stuff. And I love I love that Ubisoft is doing stuff like that, where they're kind of <laughs> highlighting, like, these are the people who make the game. It's because yes. so, so often, I mean, literally, they mentioned there were thousands of people working on the Ghost Recon games. And it's like, it's cool to see them kind of, like, giving shout out to those people because like mm -hmm. you know they, they make it they make this everything that it is and like having them up front having the community person up there as well yeah. it's like seeing her out there it's like oh yeah they're they are talking to the community and it's like yeah. we want to make it a point to show like this is a person behind it here's the face behind the community team at, at ubisoft like that's yeah. that's so cool yeah i think it's great like so many people put their time and effort into these games that we have the honor of playing so it's it is nice to put a face to yeah. those people and I mean, from what you've seen so far, like with all the reveals and all the trailers so far, what do you think is the most game-changing thing that you're looking oh, forward to? Man, I don't, I don't know. Like, there, there's so many things. I just really want to get in and experience the story. I mean, that's yeah. that's always my thing. It's kind of like, how did this happen? How did Walker turn? And like, that's and like the narrative stuff for me. That's always my big thing. Like, mm -hmm. like I, I enjoy PvP. I'm not that great at PvP, so I usually stick to the PVE side of things. Yeah. And that's usually when you get your nice narratives, you get your story, and the idea of like, I mean. Having having a rich genius evil guy is always <laughs> lots of fun. Having like this tropical lush island, like okay, that's gonna be a lot of fun. But I want to figure out what's going on. Why right. did why did Walker turn? Like yeah. he seems like he was. Because the last we saw him, yeah. we were kind of on good terms. Yeah, <laughs> and so the idea that like he was, I mean, he was a ghost, and like what made him go like, oh yeah, I don't, I'm on the wrong side of this. Mm -hmm. Like what made him think that like, oh, I should be on the side of the evil death robots. That's but where I should be. The scarier thing is he doesn't think he's on the wrong side. That's true. Right? Because, you know, even in Oracle, there was a point where he was like, yeah, well, at least I know what side I'm on. <laughs> now, I think that was less of ghosts and wolves now and more right and wrong. You know, he wants to be on the right side. He thinks that the way, you know, everything was handled before and how he lost his men was the wrong way. So you get this moral, like compromise now right like he doesn't think he's wrong we think he's wrong i if it is directly related to oracle and the fact that he lost his man and somewhere in between we find out that kieran might have been on the wrong side of some sort which pushed him over the edge he may, well, maybe past his break point yes. you could say ha <laughs> exactly you get it you get it <laughs> Man, I mean, really, I mean, honestly, too, just like watching the trailers and like watching the gameplay, the amount of different kind of landscapes is that's mm -hmm. what I want to get into. It's like seeing the snowy mountains. Like, right. I want to take some of these vehicles down. You know, like, was it the fat boy? Like, just tear yeah. through the jungle in the fat boy. And it's like, that's going to be lots of fun. And this, you know, even just riding around with like three buddies in a vehicle like this, just like cruising right. around, just jumping over stuff, that's always a blast. And like just exploring a new world. And those are terrifying looking vehicles right yeah. there. That they have no driver. There's death machines with guns, and then they use their own vehicle. This is one of the things like in the game, you'd be like, "Oh yeah, totally meant to do that. Yeah, yep, totally meant to jump out and use my vehicle as a battering ram and then blow it up. Yep, meant to do that. Meant it. Nailed it. Yep, totally, <laughs> totally crushed. But um, yeah, and then flying around. I mean, I, I, hopefully we can get helicopters and fly around the island yeah. too. That yeah. was one of my favorite things in Wildlands. I was like, that objective looks a little too far. Time to steal a helicopter. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like they just showed us so many different features, new things. Obviously, more awesome things are on the way. They already announced every four months a new expansion coming to the game that is already something to look forward to, and the game isn't even out yet. It's coming out October 
4th. October 4th, man. Yeah, it's it looks good. Even like the, right at the start, I'm just looking over my notes, like going back to the start, it felt very intense. Like it felt like you, I mean, it, the idea is you're being hunted. Right. And that opening sequence there, it was like, oh, Jesus. Like that guy was running. He was not fighting back. He was just trying to hide yeah. and stay alive. So he can heal himself. Yeah. Like, and it was rough out there. <laughs> yeah. And also, one thing too, if, if you've ever played a Ubisoft shooter title, you know to avoid helicopters like the plague. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like no one has a good time in the helicopters to start the games. Like Far Cry 5, <laughs> now yeah. and this. Just, helicopters don't seem to survive very long when you're going yep. for narrative structure in a Ubisoft title. Especially over an island. Yeah, <laughs> It was yeah. like, this does not look like we're going to go very So well. just stay away from the helicopters. But yeah, like it, right here at the beginning, it's just like he was running around and it's just like, just keep moving. Like, get away. And that's, yeah, this is terrifying. Like, everything's all blurry and he's, he's panting and breathing and spitting out blood. Mm -hmm. and it's like, that's that's a fun way to start yeah. off a game. <laughs> and oh. then he gets clipped again. Yeah. It's like, poor guy. <laughs> Just, How does he make it out of this? And you can see there he can't even pick up the gun all the way. Yeah. So. Like he's literally, he can't, it looks like he might not be able to aim down sight because mm -hmm. his, his left arm is injured. So. Yeah, it's definitely going to add an extreme element to the gameplay of this game. Honestly, I feel like this might be one of the most difficult Ghost Recon games with all these other elements, it being very realistic and Obviously, it's going to be drawing your attention to so many different things and with the main thing being survival. So yeah. I think it's going to be really difficult. But I'm looking forward to that. You yeah. know, I feel like a, a lot of games nowadays, they don't want to challenge you as hard, but this looks like a challenge that I'm looking forward to. Well, I've got a feeling you're going to start. I mean, you always start as kind of like rags to riches, right? right? So like you start off super rough, very clearly close to death, and then by the end of it, you're going to feel like a super soldier. <laughs> Even by the end of it, I, I have a feeling going up against Walker is going to be like, okay, oh, yeah. I don't think I'm ready, you know, no matter what. So... Yeah, I'm pumped. I'm pumped to see the progression of it, though, and see like what you encounter, and like, can you use any of those drones for you? Maybe like, yeah. can you turn them against their owners? Hack like, them exactly. Or something. You never know. I mean, technology. Throwing some watchdog stuff in there too. <laughs> It'll be great. So. So I'm really looking forward to seeing not only the game come out, but seeing how they expand, you know, each chapter with the new updates and kind of evolve this story. I'm super interested to learn more about the story itself. Like you mentioned before, like so many things could have happened, right? We don't oh, yeah. really know. We can make the assumptions, but we won't really know until the game comes out. So be sure to keep your eyes peeled, get your hands on those pre-orders. October 4th. October 4th. It feels so far away now that I've seen all this. Jeez, that's what, well, it's just like five months out. I mean, that's it's crazy. <laughs> like, oh, I, I love that. I love the idea too, that it's like, oh, here's an announcement. Oh, by the way, it's coming very, very yes. soon. You know, where it's like before it'd be like, all right, this will be out in two or three years from now. It's like, <laughs> no, 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 here we go. It's coming out, it's coming out soon. You're gonna, you're gonna be enjoying this this fall, so. I'm amped for it. I don't know about you, but I'm yes, ready for it. I am definitely looking forward to it. Um, I mean, just off the top of my head, some of my favorite changes they've made is definitely the buddy carry system. Um, because that was something, you know, even playing in Wildlands, I would be all stealthy and snipe someone, but guess what? They found their body, and now they suspect me. I'm like, no. I mean, it got to the point where I would try to, like, grab them and then drag them off and then <laughs> knock them out somewhere safe. But I like this a lot better. It's really cool. Well, that's great. And also, like, in me, like me, I try to keep people alive. So it's like you run out in the middle of right. a bunch of firefight, and it's like, well, you're dead in front of everyone. Like, I could run out, grab you, and hopefully get you away from them. Like, right. that's cool. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's something new. It makes total sense. And, like, mm -hmm. even in that, we saw her throw the smoke screen down and then yeah. run and, you know, grab the guy and drop him off and work on him. It's like, oh. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. good. Like, that's 100% the kind of stuff I'll be pulling off. Exactly. So, yeah, that seems realistic. Oh, I love it. I love it. Is there anything you'd like to also talk about and highlight? I feel like I've made all these notes, and we've nailed them all on the head. Oh, yeah, yeah. How do those <laughs> hats stay on? That's that's what I'm curious about. Again, I got, the guy had a bucket hat on, and he was getting thrown around, shot at. What, what sort of hat technology Tell us your tricks. Did, 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 did Skell come up with that hats don't <laughs> leave heads? That's it's unfair. Yeah, and also, that's the skill tech I want. Yeah, yeah. Also, that crazy helmet with like the camera on the front too. Like, what what is that? I I, I want to <laughs> I want to see that in real life. I want to walk around with a helmet head and a camera and see if that makes me any more of a badass. I'd I probably mean, not. that is actually the other really eerie thing about this storyline is that yeah, it's you know skill tech, you know technical technologically advanced robots, but. None of these inventions actually feel like they're that far out of reach. Like, 
right now. Yeah, day yeah. Day, so. I think those drones, uh, if you took those guns off the drones, you could see those in Disney World right now. <laughs> right? Like the light shows and stuff. Like that's what it is. But, you know, then you slap some weapons on and we got yeah, ourselves a Ghost Recon a game. <laughs> so I think that's that's the issue right there. So, yeah, just don't don't put bullets and weapons on, on drones. Please don't, don't let AI Please. have weapons yet. Please. Not yet. <laughs> well, actually, it's like not really to the game, but I did watch this. They did develop a robot that can fire again, and I was like, that is terrifying. <laughs> and then now that I'm watching the trailer, I'm like, it's really not that impossible for something like that to happen. Yeah. So I think that adds to the effect that this game is actually just going to have on us, period. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, you even saw that. Like, it starts, like, in 2019, it was, like, the first, like, robot had killed somebody. And then it's, like, just a few years later, it's, like... <sighs> Okay, oh. yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. when you know when your Roomba has a pistol on it, you know, we're, <laughs> we're in trouble. It's like, oh, it's for home protection and also vacuums your floors. Um, <laughs> yeah, once that starts happening, then we're, we're going to have some, we're going to have to have some discussions, I think, on a, on a yeah. higher level. Yeah, but, yeah. I agree. But with all that said, everybody, we hope you enjoyed the reveal stream. We hope you enjoyed our post show that was brought to you by Ubisoft. And Jack, it was just awesome chatting with you Absolutely. and geeking out over this game. Um, any final words before we wrap up the show? Man, I just gotta—I gotta start prepping myself for October fourth and yes. keep an eye on your Roombas because uh, <laughs> they're—they're they're coming after you. Is what's gonna happen. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Hopefully you'll be fine. Yes, you'll I be mean, okay. If anything, it'll teach us to pick up a broom and <laughs> kick it old school. But you guys, keep your eyes peeled. October fourth, Ghost Recon Breakpoint is gonna be in your hands. So hope you're looking forward to it as much as we are, and we hope you enjoyed the show. But until next time, we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.